Sisters, we, we, we are trying to synchronize the, the computers here. So just give us a few seconds and then we will start because it's, it's two separate groups at the same time. So just give us one more minute as we finalize. Okay. Sister Sota, do you have any, any item of music while Elda is uh, synchronizing? Okay, I'll sing one. Thank you. I will follow thee, my Savior, wheresoever my Lord may be. Where thou goest, I will follow. Yes, my Lord, I'll follow thee. I will follow thee, my Savior. Thou didst shed thy blood for me. And though all men should forsake thee, by thy grace I'll follow thee. Though the road be rough and thorny, trackless as the foaming sea, thou hast trod this way before me, and I'll gladly follow thee. I will follow thee, my Savior, thou didst share thy blood for me. And though all men should forsake thee, by thy grace I'll follow thee. Though I meet with tribulation, sorely tempted though I be, I remember thou wast tempted and rejoice to follow thee. I will follow thee, my Savior, thou didst share thy blood for me. And though all men should forsake thee, by thy grace I'll follow thee. Though thou leadest me through affliction, poor forsaken though I be, thou wast destitute afflicted, and I only follow thee. I will follow thee, my Savior, that did shed thy blood for me. Though all men should forsake thee, by thy grace I'll follow thee. Though to Jordan's rolling billows, cold and deep thou leadest me. Thou hast crossed the waves before me, and I still will follow thee. land the lambs in the sea, when a I will follow thee, my Savior. Thou didst shed thy blood for me, and all men should forsake thee by thy grace. I'll follow thee. Warm sang is Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Sister Zoda, for uh, this uh, sweet melody. And now uh, I can see that uh, Elder is ready uh, to start. Elder, it's over to you. Uh, good evening, good evening, everyone. Uh, we will start with a, a word of prayer. 
and then we go straight into our, in progress. We go straight into our study. Shall we pray? Our Father and our God, again we come at your feet to learn of you. Teach us meekness. Teach us uh, to be faithful to you. The study we have tonight is a, the study of faithfulness, regardless of consequence. So as we shall uh, open your holy writ, how can we go forward without requesting the presence and the guidance of the Holy Spirit? So may he be with us and be our God, save us into your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. As we, as we have uh, um, uh, said before, it's two forums together. So we are on Daniel chapter 3, verse 15 with, the, with one group. So stand in the gap, uh, you, will, you will have to start with us on Daniel B, verse 15. So what we will do is I will give an, a, an overview and then we go into, into the study. But before the overview, we will need to um, start from uh, um, Daniel chapter three, verse seven. That's uh, so we get the um, uh, a hang of where we are exactly. So I'll read from Daniel chapter three, verse seven to about thirteen fourteen, and then we go into our study. Therefore, at that time when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and all kinds of music. All the people, the nations, and the languages fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Wherefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. They spake and said to the king Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Thou, thou, O king, has made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music um, shall fall down and worship the golden image. And, and whoso falleth not down and worshipeth, that he should be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. There are, verse 12, there are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar in his rage and fury commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought this man before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, is it true? This is where we ended last week. Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not, do, do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the king, the golden image which I set up. So this is where we ended last week. So uh, the, in a, in, I've pulled out a few slides from our uh, settings before for the benefit of others. In Daniel's, in uh, the three Hebrew boys time, they are, their lot or their problem was the golden image that was set up and all representatives from the then known world came to the plain of Dura to, for the dedication of the image for the purpose of worship. So everyone at the sound of the music everyone had to bow down and worship. 
Now, except the three Hebrew boys, everyone in the plain of Dura went down and worshipped. So there are a few, about three slides that we need to, to acquaint ourselves with. Now, in Daniel's time, in the time of Nebuchadnezzar and the three bo Hebrew boys, their test was the golden image. Today, our test will be the, the national Sunday law. So that is the equivalent of their test then. Our test in our day will be the Sunday law. So I will read a few slides just to, to, um, to get us to speed. The story of Daniel, that's, that's where I'm getting this quotation um, by uh, Stephen Nelson Haskell. The history of the city of Babylon is put on record because it is God's object lesson uh, to the world today. So the, the main reason for the book of Daniel is to give an object lesson to us living in the final hours of this, this earth's history. That when we study carefully the book of Daniel, our steps may be ordered so we know how to navigate life, how to navigate even uh, our religion through the time that we are about to get into. These boys faced a very difficult time when that image was set up for the purpose of worship and, and uh, when everyone is, is bowing down to worship, they could not. And now they are before the king uh, the king is now interrogating them whether it is true that when everyone fell down to worship, they did not, and is now giving them a second chance and orders his musicians to, to now play the music. When that music is played the second time, it is mainly for the three Hebrew boys. Yes, the rest could bow down a second time, but the second time is only meant, is mainly meant for the three Hebrew boys. So this is exactly what we will also face because history repeats itself. Once we understand uh, Daniel chapter three, we will, we will know what is before us and we will know how to to handle the situations. So that's what we will be studying today. How then shall we handle a situation where we are forced to worship on a, on a spurious Sabbath? How shall, we be, how shall we handle it? So this is what we will be looking at. So the history of the city of Babylon is put on record because it is God's object lesson to the world today. The book of Revelation, which is the complement of the book of Daniel, frequently uses the name Babylon, applying it to the modern churches. So the modern churches are referred to as Babylon or, or the, the, the daughters of the, of the harlot, right, in Revelation. The relation of the Jews to Babylon back then to the Babylon of Nebuchadnezzar is the same as that sustained by the remnant church, the true Israel to the churches which having known truth in our day have rejected it. So as, as Nebuchadnezzar and his Babylon were at that time, uh, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego were faced this against Nebuchadnezzar and Babylon. In our time, we will face exactly the same when the, 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 at the dedication of the national Sunday law. Because as there are Sunday laws now, but until the dedication is done, it's not, it's, not, it's not statutory, it's not mandatory that everyone worships on a Sunday. But once the national Sunday law is dedicated, we, it is as though we are at, 
in, you know, at the foot of this golden image and we are supposed to bow down and worship. Should we or will we? The next, so the sins, so I just put this in bullet points. This is still page 25 of um, uh, uh, Brother Haskell's uh, uh, book. The sins of ancient Babylon will be repeated today. So what were the sins, the sins of, the, of ancient Babylon, which will be repeated? So the answer to what, this, what is before us, the answer back then is what we will have to put in play in our day. So what were the sins of Babylon, the ancient Babylon? Her educational system, is, is the one now generally accepted. It is, it is sad that even in our institution, uh, set up in a particular way to, to, to educate Israel in a certain way, that has been put aside. And we have now adopted a Babylonian educational system. Uh, I, I dare not say much. We all know. If you don't know, just walk up to our closest institution, uh, Newbold. And before you go there, read the blueprint. And then go there knowing what the blueprint says regarding education. And you will see how far off the mark we are. So we have patterned even our education systems as per Babylonian style, right? The next thing, the sins of ancient Babylon, the next sin is her government with its excessive taxes. We don't see much excessive taxes right now, but if you go to the time of, of, uh, of uh, the pharaohs, the, the um, Israel in Egypt, you will see how the taxes were. And it's, it's, we are not far from it. The taxes, will be so heavy, particularly on the very poor. I'm sure you, you, you see the complaints in our newspapers even now that the super rich do not pay taxes, but the, the poor end up paying so hefty taxes. So that is another scene of ancient Babylon that will be repeated in our day. The third one is exaltation of the rich and the oppression of the poor. Do you know um, there is a cartel or a grouping of rich people who will make statements on behalf of the whole world? A, a group of people, maybe a handful, probably 10, but they will make statements on behalf of the whole world. And, and, and therefore, we see the whole world following what this handful of, of people say, because they have the means, they have the money, they are rich, and we are poor. So you will see uh, the rich, regardless of what, uh, whether, what they say has substance in it, but the fact that they are rich, they are listened to. And when you come to the other end of the spectrum, regardless of whether what you say makes sense, but the fact that it has come from a poor person, it will not be regarded. So you will see this shift. The other sin of, of um, Babylon was its pride, arrogance, and love of display. And we, we see that even to today, rich nations boast over their riches. Rich people boast over their, their, their riches. So you will find out that the rich nations will boast. It's, it's not far. You will see the boasting of rich nations. So we are dealing with history, but that history will be repeated in our day. The next one is the choice of arti the artificial in place of the natural. That's what you will begin to see in our day as it was seen in, in, in the time of uh, the ancient Babylon. The last thing 
is the exaltation. Now, this is a very important one. That is the main one that, that us today we will have to face just as the three Hebrew boys up to where we are in, in, in Daniel chapter three, the three Hebrew boys had to face the exaltation of God, the God of science instead of the God of heaven. Now, what a great time for us to be discussing this. Now, um, I'll tell you an experience that happened during the COVID time. We had one of our, our doctors uh, do a presentation uh, in our local church. And uh, edge, he was urging, I, I am not speaking for or against vaccination. I, I, I'm not here for that. But I, I'm just trying to prove a point here. Now he was urging church members to go and get vaccinated. And the question was asked, where in times of pestilence in all times, how did God uh, deal with pestilence as far as um, uh, Israel was concerned? So in is what were the, the, the counsels to Israel regarding um, their survival through a period of, of pestilence? Now you will see that the God of science is now exalted over the God of heaven. Now, one simple thing that, that, uh, that was done in the olden days when there was a, pe a, a, a pestilence was quarantine. We, you, we see that with, with lepers. Lepers had to come out of, of, of the city and dwell in the, in the mountains or on the outskirts for, for fear of them uh, are spreading this contagious disease. There are many, many steps that Israel were taught of God to deal with, with. But what you will now begin to see, where there is counsel from God regarding whatever matter it is, people will go more for science than the word of God. So these were the sins of ancient Israel, which will be repeated in our day. So um, this is just to prove uh, that uh, in our day, this is as the National Sunday Law will be our golden image of our time. God suffered not envy and hatred to prevail against the children. How often have the enemies of God united their strength and wisdom to destroy the character and influence of the few humble trusting persons, but nothing can prevail against those who are strong in the Lord. The, the promise is the wrath of man shall, uh, the wrath of man shall, pr shall praise thee. So history will be repeated. Now this is now spirit of prophecy. History will be repeated. This is now proof that the golden image of the three Hebrew boys time in, in our day, it will be the Sunday law. False religion will be exalted. Remember we said when state join hands with false religion, if the result is blood flow flowing. But when state joins hands with God, the, the, the term given to that is theocracy. Uh, Israel will flourish. But unfortunately, all nations under the world will hold hands. As we saw, uh, the, the toes, the, the feet and toes of iron and clay, the, 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 the civil governments will join hands with false religion, right? So false religion will be exalted. The first day of the week, a common working day, possessing no sanctity whatever, will be set up as the image at Babylon. So as we study the image at Babylon, remember we are dealing with, with history, and the current situation in the time of Daniel, 
and then transposing the same information to our time. So we're dealing with three uh, different sets of, of, uh, of situations. We have to apply history to us today so that we know how to handle the situation. So we will go even, how ought we to handle a situation such as these three boys found themselves in? So a common working day, meaning Sunday, possessing no sanctity, whatever, will be set up as was the image at Babylon. All nations, now when it says all nations, it means re regardless of how massive that nation is or how small the nation is, but all nations and tongues and people will be commanded to worship this furious Sabbath. This is Satan's plan to make of no account the day instituted by God and given to the world as a memorial of creation. The decree enforcing the worship of this day is to go forth to all the world. There is no nation that is completely joined hands with God so that spiritually that nation will prosper. All nations will join hands with, with false religion. And once that false religion uh, has, has got hold of the hand of the state, it will now force its dictates and its dogmas upon the nat nat nationals through the hand of the state. We, we need to, to, uh, to understand that. Nations will be stirred to their very center. Support will be withdrawn from those who proclaim God's only standard of righteousness, the only sure test, test of character. And all who will not bow to the decree. Now, all who will not bow to the decree. In Daniel's time, we see the, the three boys. We are only dealing with the Daniel chapter three. We will see as we progress, with, with, the, with, the, with the book of Daniel, even Daniel himself faced a similar test. So no one is left untested. Even in our day, no one will be left untested. We will be tested as though we were the only soul on this planet. Everyone will be tested equally. So all who will not bow down like these three Hebrew boys, to the decree of the national councils and obey the national laws to exalt the Sabbath instituted by man. Notice that in, in, in Daniel's time, the law was instituted by man. In particular, the law was instituted by the survivors of the decree to kill the wise men of Babylon. Remember, some of them were killed when the decree went, went out, when Nebuchadnezzar sent out the decree, kill all the wise men of Babylon. They were only saved when Daniel gave the dream and its interpretation. So the survivors of that decree are the ones who crafted the law of having everyone worship the, the uh, image on the plain, plain of Dura. So in our time, the law will be instituted by man or by the man of sin, to the disregard of God's only, God's holy day, will feel those who do not bow down, will feel not the oppressive power of property alone, but of the Protestant world. The Protestant world, because they have joined hands with property, they will act even on behalf of property to persecute the saints of God. Uh, 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 the power of popery alone, but of the Protestant world, which the Protestant world is, is uh, defined in the book of Revelation as the image of the beast. Book Maranatha, page 214. Right, so this was a kind of big introduction so that we are all uh, on the same page. Now we we will start from verse 14, which we covered last week, and then go to verse 15, which we will deal with uh, today. So Nebuchadnezzar 
calls the, the three Hebrew boys and then speaks to them and says, I have received the report that you have not bowed down to the image after the music had been, had been, had been played. Is this true? Right? And then he mentions Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So he's addressing the three. The only three out of all the representatives of the world, the only three that didn't bow down were had to come before the king. So the king asked them, is this true? Do you not serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Is this true? We covered that last week. So now we go into our study today. So he goes on to say, now, this is the report I received that you did not bow down. Now that you are before me, if you are now ready, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, the psaltery, the dulcimer, and all kinds of musical instruments. Now you are before me, will you fall down and worship the image which I have made? And if you do, you do yourselves well, do yourselves good. But if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the very same hour into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. Now we have covered all this. What we haven't covered is the last bit of verse 15. He then puts his icing on his cake and says to, to the Hebrew boys, and who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? So when we receive, when we get such statements, when we get such statements, uh, there is a question which we should ask because history always repeats itself. So when I got that statement, I had to go into history. Who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? In other words, by saying this, he is, Nebuchadnezzar is saying he is more supreme than the creator, more supreme than the supreme God. He is above all gods. That's what he's saying. Who is able to deliver you out of my, out of my hands? So now I went into history to find out whether any king had ever said anything similar to what Nebuchadnezzar is saying. And when I go to uh, Exodus 5, verse 2, it says, And Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. I don't know your God. Now, this is arrogance at, at its most. I, um, who is the God? Now, if, if, if you look at what Nebuchadnezzar says, who is this God that will deliver you from my hand? It's, it's the same thing. Nebuchadnezzar borrows this thought from the Pharaoh in Egypt. Who is this God? I know not such a God, neither will I let Israel go. We also see in 2 Kings 18 verse 35, who are they among all the gods of the countries that have delivered their country out of my hands? In other words, all the countries that I've conquered, who among uh, the countries I've conquered have had their God deliver, their, uh, uh, deliver his people from my hand? In other words, he's saying, I am supreme over your God, the God of Israel. Who are they among all the gods of the countries that have delivered their country out of my hand, that the Lord should deliver Jerusalem out of mine hand? Now, we look at uh, the book, of, we are looking at history in the time, uh, from the time of, of, of the three Hebrew boys, before the the, 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 before Nebuchadnezzar had any other king 
said sim the same or similar statements. So this is what we are going through. We are going through history before Nebuchadnezzar. So 2 Chronicles 32, verse 15 to 17. Now, therefore, let not Hezekiah deceive you. Hezekiah is the prophet of God. So the king now is saying, don't let Hezekiah deceive you, nor persuade you in this manner, neither yet believe him. For no God of any nation or kingdom was able to deliver his people out of mine hand and out of the hand of my fathers, how much less, listen to this, how much less shall your God deliver you out of mine hand? This is the same thing that, that Nebuchadnezzar, he borrowed that statement from um, history. How much less shall the God of Israel deliver you out of mine hand? And his servants spake yet, uh, more now this is this is one thing we need to take as we go into the period before us when a king says something as as puppets do i um, i i hope um, i'm not offending anyone even the the servants will echo the words of their master so the master he says, how much less shall your God deliver you out of, out of mine hand? So his servants follow and speak yet more against the, the, the Lord God and against his servant, Hezekiah. So what did the king do after he was supported by his servants? The king then wrote also letters to rail on the Lord God of Israel. So he puts it you know, in writing and to speak against God of Israel, saying, as the gods of the nations of other lands have not delivered their people out of mine hand, so shall not the God of Hezekiah deliver his people out of mine hand. Um, Isaiah 36, 20. Who are they among all the gods of these lands? that have delivered their land out of mine hand, that the Lord should deliver uh, Jerusalem out of mine, mine hand. Now, in, in speaking this way, Isaiah then poses a question to the kings who are challenging the God of his people. Isaiah then poses a question to Nebuchadnezzar, to the Pharaoh and all the, the the, um, the, the kings who uttered the same sentiments. Isaiah then asked the question, whom has thou reproached? In saying what you're saying, whom have you reproached and blasphemed? And against whom has thou exalted thy voice and lifted up thine eyes on high, even against the Holy One of Israel? Who are you blaspheming, blaspheming or, or reproaching in uttering such statements that even your God, the God of Israel, cannot deliver Israel out of Nebuchadnezzar's hands or out of the Pharaoh's hand? Now, Pharaoh had a, had a, had a wake up call. Unfortunately, the wake up call ended with his life. By saying, who I know not the God. And Nebuchadnezzar, now Nebuchadnezzar, remember, as we were we have been studying, God is targeting the king so that his servants will echo the words of their master. If Nebuchadnezzar speaks well of the God of Israel, it will follow that the servants will speak good of the, of the uh, God of Israel. We, if, do you know, you cannot go higher than your master. So God aims at, at, at um, uh, Nebuchadnezzar. So Nebuchadnezzar at this point is work in progress in the hands of God. So uh, Isaiah has asked the question. So I, I thought, because there are some people who do not believe in the Old Testament, so I thought, in the New Testament, 
Do we see such statements where people make such utterances? I don't know your God. Who can deliver you out of my, my hands? And I, 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 I saw in, in Matthew 27, verse 43, now people uh, reviling Jesus, speaking ill to Jesus. They said these words. He trust, Jesus trusted in God. Let, let then his God or his father, let him deliver him now if he will have him. For he said, I am the son of God. So he's saying, if, if truly you were the son of the God you believe in, let then your God deliver you. And then we will believe. Right? Um, now, with that in, in mind, we, we are still dealing with, with the words of Nebuchadnezzar. Who is able to deliver you from my hands? Now, because we are dealing with history and present, I, we have to move now from that historic account. But taking all the lessons from that history, now let's come to our time. Daniel chapter 3 is a chapter that we cannot rush because it gives us, um, it gives us uh, uh, it, um, a situation where we, we know how to handle the situation when we are faced with the, with the Sunday law uh, before us. So in our day, how ought we to handle similar situations as the three Hebrew boys faced, how then shall we handle the situation? Matthew 10 verse 19 says, this is how to handle the situation. And we will, we will now take certain phrases from the verses we, we are going to, to, to study and then come up with, a, with what God would have us be. How shall we handle the situation? So Matthew 10 verse 19 says, but when they deliver you up, the three boys were, were delivered. They didn't walk up to the king. They were delivered to King Nebuchadnezzar. So when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak. For it shall be given you in that same hour that what ye shall speak. So number one, you do not prepare uh, statements to, stay, to, 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 to say to the king. Because the, this controversy is, is between Christ and Satan. So Christ will give you what to say. This is the first thing that we ought to understand. We do not go there with, I know it all. If you go before the kings with, I know it all, you will surely, surely fail. As you are delivered before the king, God will give you exactly what to say because only he knows what, what trap the devil is setting before you. So because he knows, he will know how to deliver you out of that situation. So he will give you what to say. That's the first thing. The next thing, Mark 13, verse 11. You see, these are uh, different synoptic gospel writers. Now, you find out that's what Matthew wrote. Now, when you come to Mark commenting on the same situation, there is more information added. So let's see what, what's, what more information is added by Mark. But when they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no thought beforehand. Do not prepare statements as you are delivered to the king. Uh, take no thought beforehand what ye shall speak, neither do ye premeditate. But whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, that speak ye. In other words, 
as a question is asked, is it true that you have defied my command? You do not give your answer. The answer is given you and whatever is given you is that which you will speak, right? But whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, that speak ye. Now I've had to change the color there because we need that last phrase. For it is not you that speak, but the Holy Ghost. Now, I want us to carry this statement back to Daniel when the Hebrew boys now have to answer and uh, hopefully we can cover uh, their answer. Let me, let me keep track on time. Yeah, we are, still, we are still on time. When the Hebrew boys answer, they don't speak their words. Whatever comes out of their mouths because of the relationship they have, they have maintained from young up to, they're still young men, up to where they are because of the relationship they've kept with their God. What they speak is the mind of God. And you will see as we, as we deal with, with, with these passages of scripture, the word of God is foolproof. What do I mean by foolproof? Foolproof means there is no question that can leave you stunned, that can leave you uh, with, not, you, you can't answer uh, a question. The word of God leaves you at a higher position, none can gainsay you. So because of that, if you speak the word that God gives you to speak or the Holy Spirit gives you to speak at that time, you are safe even as the conversations go. I want you to carry that, that and you will see how the answer given by the Hebrew boys, no one can challenge it after that. No one can because it is an answer that God has given to Nebuchadnezzar through the Hebrew boys. So for it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Ghost. Luke 21, verse 14 and 15. Luke, this is how Luke uh, uh, describes it. Settle it therefore in your hearts, not to meditate before what ye shall answer. Do not prepare speeches, people, People, do not prepare speeches. If you are in Christ, do not prepare speeches. For I, God is speaking, will give you a mouth. You have a mouth already, but God will give you a mouth. Just a mouth? No. He will also give you wisdom above those that you are addressing, which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay or resist. Once you have spoken, that finishes the matter. Once you have spoken, that finishes the matter because it is God that has spoken. This is how we ought to, to deal with this situation when the, sun, the national Sunday law is enforced on us. These, this is the counsel that God is, is giving us. We also see in the book of Acts, in the New Testament we've jumped to now. Then Peter, now notice, Peter is what? He is filled with the Holy Ghost. Just now we've just read that the Holy Ghost will give you what to utter. Now Peter here in Acts, we are told he is filled with the Holy Ghost. So because he's filled with the Holy Ghost, only speak the words of God. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said to them, ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent man, by what means he is made whole? Now, now notice from verse 10 how cutting the answer is how direct the answer is, because the spirit has already seen that this is not a time to sugarcoat. 
It is a time to be direct. So he gives utterance to Peter words of directness. Then Peter says, or the spirit says, be it known unto all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him does this man stand here before, uh, before you all. This is the stone. Now the stone here is not the impotent man who is standing whole. The, the stone here is Jesus. This is the stone which was set at not of you builders, which is become the head of the corner. Neither now they, the, the final utterance here from the Holy Spirit in verse 12 is cutting. He says, neither is there salvation in any other. Remember, the people that uh, uh, Peter is addressing are the Jews that had crucified Christ. So he says then, and those Jews were looking forward to salvation at, at some point. Then Peter then says, neither is there salvation which you are looking out for, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby you must be saved. Now, what, where are we given among men whereby you must be saved? Now, what, where are we going with this? We are speaking about the three Hebrew boys before the court. In fact, the three Hebrew boys were before Nebuchadnezzar the king. And remember, they were also before everyone that attended the dedication uh, ceremony in the plain of Dura um, in Babylon. All representatives of all nations under, and, you know, under in this world were there. So this is happening publicly. And you will see when the boys give an answer to the king, the answer is not only to the king, the answer is also heard by those present. It's very important. So when we are taken to the courts to give a reason for our faith, we do not prepare statements. And what we speak is what the Holy Spirit gives us to speak. No matter how direct and how it may infuriate the, the recipients, that is not your problem. As, as the spirit gives, so you should utter it. This is very important. That will help us understand when you go to the next verse now, when the Hebrew boys now give an answer to, to Nebuchadnezzar. How ought we then to answer? Acts 5 verse 29, then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than man. That statement must rule supreme in our minds. Acts 6 15, and all that set in, in council, looking steadfastly on him, saw his face. Now this is what will happen. And you will see it as we go deeper and deeper in chapter three. Chapter three is very important. As we go deeper and deeper, there will be a, a moment where the, our faces will glow. Once we are obedient to say only the words that the spirit gives us to utter, there will surely be a point where the glory of God will shine through us. And all that set in council, looking steadfastly on him, Stephen, saw, saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. This is not, this is, this is, a, this is historical truth, right? And because it's a historical truth, it is prophetic truth as well. For such will happen to us if we are faithful. Um, I'm just, I will just uh, jump maybe to the next. Now, in, in finalizing, 
our exposition of uh, verse 15. Who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? So the king had forgotten certain things. What he himself once owned, right? And uh, you see that in the next, next um, uh, statement, that the Hebrew youths, uh, the Hebrew youths God was God of gods and the Lord of kings. Remember in Daniel 2, 47 that we studied, he says, truly your, your, God, your Lord is the God of all gods, right? So he conf Nebuchadnezzar had confessed in verse, chapter 2, verse 47, that the Hebrew boy's God was a God of gods, above, supreme over all gods. So Nebuchadnezzar had, had quickly forgotten that. Proud men are still ready to say, as Pharaoh, who is the Lord God that I should obey his voice? Or as Nebuchadnezzar, who is the Lord, Lord that I should fear his power? Now, spirit of prophecy, to finish this off, his senses were perverted by the prospect of his own greatness. And he seemed to lose all knowledge of, of, of a monarch above all kings, meaning our, our supreme God. When his dream was, was shown him by Daniel, he had acknowledged of a truth it is that your God is a God of God and the Lord of kings. But he now took all this back and so to demonstrate before the representatives of different nations who had assembled at the dedication of this image that he, the king of Babylon, was the greatest king in the universe and that all must bow low to his supremacy and submit as slaves to his will. This is what happens when church holds the hands of the state or vice versa. This, the church, will then enforce its dogmas, its belief system on all and uses the arm of the state to have that enforced. All went well in the carrying out of this, of this arrangement till the disobedience of the, of, of the Hebrew captains. So all was going well. The dedication ceremony was going all well, but when the music was played and everyone bowed down, the, the three Hebrew, Hebrew boys spoiled, spoiled the dedication ceremony for Nebuchadnezzar. So now he's trying to, to show who is supreme here, right? Thus, these youth imbued with the Holy Spirit, that's why I said we need to take that, those statements from Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Very, very important. They, these boys were imbued with the Holy Spirit. So the answer they gave to King when, when, was not their answer. It was the answer straight from the throne of God. Thus, these youth imbued with the Holy Spirit declared to the whole nation their faith. So in addressing the King, they are also addressing the world. I'll say this again because this is exactly where we are going into. A lot of faithful people of God will be taken to the highest of courts. They will be taken to, to, the, to the great men of, the, of this world. They will be taken to the supreme courts of, the, of, of this world. And the, their trial will be televised so that the whole world can see. In answering the judge, they are also giving an answer to the rest of the world. I want us to take this as we go. So, imbued with the Holy Spirit, declared to the whole nation their faith that he whom they worshipped was the only true living God. This demonstration of their own faith was the most eloquent presentation of their principle principles in order to impress idolaters with the power and greatness of the living God his servants must reveal their own reverence for God so if you represent God on earth you are a servant of God you must therefore you must then a servant of God reveal your reverence to your God you cannot then bow down. 
you can you cannot then buckle at the command uh, given at the dedication of the national Sunday law. You cannot, because your God is supreme over the commands of, of, of man. They must make it manifest that he is the only object of their honor and worship. And that no consideration, not even the preservation of life itself can induce them to make the least concession to idolatry. These lessons have a direct and vital bearing upon our experience today. We are not just discussing things. <clears throat> In vain were the king's threats. He could not turn these noble men from their allegiance to the great ruler of nations. From the history of their fathers, they had learned that disobedience uh, to God results in dishonor, disaster, and death. Pick anyone from the Bible who dishonored God when they should have shown before the world and instead they did the opposite, study their end. And on the other hand, as we are studying the life of these three Hebrew boys, you will see how God honors those that honor him. That the fear of the Lord is not only the beginning of wisdom, but the foundation of all true prosperity. They knew that they owed to God every faculty they, they possessed. And while their hearts were full of generous sympathy towards all men, they had a lofty aspiration to prove themselves loyal to God. They are not there to prove their dis disloyalty to Nebuchadnezzar. They are there to prove their loyalty to their God. Uh, we are closing now. These lessons have a direct and vital bearing upon our experience in these days. My soul, now listen to this, my soul, Sister White is writing, is deeply stirred at the things that have been presented to me. I feel indignation of spirit that in our institutions, so little honor has been given to the living God. I, 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 I will be brave enough to move this to, to our churches. I feel indignation of spirit that in our churches, so little honor has been given to the living God. And so much honor to what is supposed to be human talent, but, we, but with which the Holy Spirit has no connection. How much do we exalt the, the, um, uh, the talent? We, we send our children to to the pulpit to, to sing and they are scantily dressed and, and even their, their music, I'm just giving it as an example, the music, even the way they are singing, it's so worldly, but we, we, we raise our children to, to such a pedestal when the Holy Spirit does not, does not even recognize what they are doing. The Spirit of God is not acknowledged and respected Men have passed judgment upon it. Uh, its operations has been, uh, have been uh, condemned as uh, fanaticism, enthusiasm, and uh, undue um, excitement. <clears throat> so I think in the interest of time, we will stop here. So what have we said today? This is, this is the time of um, uh, our conclusion. The three Hebrew boys are not only uh, before a king. They are before a, a king, a superpower. Babylon was a superpower, a power that ruled the whole world. It's not, he was not just a king of Babylon. He was the king of the whole world. If I may put it in today's terms, um, Biden or, or um, President Biden is the supreme, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is how I see it. 
is the supreme ruler of the earth today. If it is not today, very soon you will see that America will be the sole superpower on earth. So now these boys are standing before such a figure. And, and the figure has recognized their wisdom because he saw their wisdom and, and even gave them to be governors in the state of Babylon, right? So now, according to Nebuchadnezzar, they have defied his command. And then he calls them before his throne in Babylon, a, 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 a city of splendor. Now think of the palace of Nebuchadnezzar. Just walking in, you, you, your head will spin because of the splendor. Now they are before, before that. And the king says, is it true? Now he's willing, he's willing to give them a second chance. He's willing to call his band to, to, to play the music again. So that if they now bow down, their previous uh, disobedience can be forgotten. But now, as they are before the king, what we will now learn in our next city is how then do they answer to, is it true that you would refuse to bow? And when the king orders his, his, his choir and his They seem to be frozen. Maybe it's the internet. Zodwa? Yes, Mama. <clears throat> I think it's the internet. Yeah, I think so too. Ayu Banzima wa matala amim hengi na womina mogu vela wambi hangi ngeni sile. Shwele, shwele, shwele nkosi, shwele, shwele mkwestu, shwele, shwele baba, shwele, shwele nkosi. Elder? Go 
I think uh, Elder was just concluding, so uh, we will just uh, pray to close. Um, let's see if uh, he's coming, but it looks like uh, he's having challenges. I uh, will ask uh, Sister Lillian, are you able to close for us in prayer? Okay, let us pray. Loving Father, we thank you for being our Father who knows everything, who plans our day. And even today, we've been blessed so much more to know how you work with your people, how you manifest yourself through your people. We have known that you are always present, even how we are going to present ourselves under the laws of the Sunday laws on when state and uh, government will come together in a church setting. We are getting equipped to prepare such times that challenges when they come to us, there will never be challenges at all. It will be just some inconveniences which you can take charge of. We are so grateful to have schools like this that sharpens us to be able to stand and be strong in faith and to exhibit what we have learned of who you are in our lives in times of trouble. So Father in heaven, even if you have not concluded this session, but all is well because you are in it in times of storm, you are always present. Be with every participant who have been here now Bless them in their household, that these words may never be their own, but must be spread for the preparation of the times that will be coming and for your soon coming. Oh, Father, thank you. Give us rest, rest for tonight, and let's come tomorrow again to learn more about you, because that's the whole duty of men. In Jesus' name, I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 We we, we just want to thank the Lord. Thank you so much, sister, for the prayer. And we want to thank um, the Lord for all of us who managed to come. Yes, we know challenges, uh, they do happen when the devil feels challenged challenge sometimes. But let us not tire. Let us continue doing what we have to do. So may we meet again tomorrow. Uh, to show defiance to the devil, whatever he is trying, you know that we will continue to hear the message 
may we be blessed as we depart from this uh, forum in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.